I spent 34 years of my life at Yale, and I was director of graduate studies in psychology. And there were some students applying from high school, or college rather, and one of them had really high test scores, really great grades, really great teacher's recommendations. Everyone wanted to admit that woman, and we did. Uh, and I call her Alice. So we admitted her, and we got her. She came to Yale. Uh, and we expected her to do great, because everything about her was great. And she really did great during the first year. Her first year was tremendous. Everything that the test said she would be. What was interesting is that by the time she was done with the program, she had gone from being one of the top students in the program to being one of the bottom students. And I asked myself, what, what happened with her? And I realized that what happened really made sense. And that is, she's really good. If you gave her a problem, she'd solve it. Oh, you know, if I gave her my problem, she'd probably solve that too. But she was really good at solving other people's problems. What she wasn't good at is coming up with her own problems. Uh, she was a good problem solver. She wasn't a good problem finder. In a lot of life, no one gives you a structured problem. In order for schools to take creativity seriously, just one thing has to happen. And that one thing is it has to be on the test. Because there's so much pressure in our society from various agencies for kids to have high test scores that if it's not on the test, principals, superintendents, and many teachers, they're not going to teach to it. Uh, because they're going to be punished, you know, if the kids turn out to be very creative, but they can't show it in test scores, even if you tell them, as you heard this probably, even if you tell them it helps test scores, they don't believe it. So until somehow we get it on the test, it's going to be really hard to get any of this stuff implemented on a large scale at school. So in my last years at Yale, we did a project called the Rainbow Project. And so that's kind of where it, it was. I was there like in 20 some odd years, and we've done a lot of research on this stuff. But the question was could we devise tests that, in our case, because that's what I was funded for, that could be used in college admissions that actually not only measured analytical abilities like the SAT and the ACT, could we devise tests that also measured creativity as well as practical thinking that would be practical and that would be psychometrically reliable and valid? So we collaborated with people all across the country. Uh, it was like 16 high schools and colleges. And the goal was to create a test that not only measured the usual stuff, but also measured creative thinking. So we had things like captioning cartoons. You'd get a cartoon like from the New Yorker and you'd have to caption it. Uh, we had another test where we'd give you titles for stories, <clears throat> like Beyond the Edge. Uh, the, sick, uh, the octopus's sneakers, uh, stuck in the elevator, sort of unusual titles. And you could choose a couple of them and write a creative story. Or we'd show you a pictorial collage, and you could tell a story orally about it, since some kids don't write so well. And we also had some multiple choice tests and some other tests. But the idea was not only to measure ACT, SAT, statewide mastery test kinds of abilities, but creative thinking too. And the, our doing this was based on the notion that creativity is not some kind of genetic ability. It's an attitude toward life. Basically, creativity is something you decide to do. If you look at a typical test or a typical essay, a lot of the stuff is, I'm going to give you a problem and you solve it. And what I do in my own courses, I teach a course on ethics, I teach a course on leadership, I teach a course on intelligence, is I always make sure that there is some independent project of some kind where they have to come up with a problem related to the course. And we spend a lot of time not just on you know, how do you solve the problem, but what's a good problem for you to solve? How do we know if it's good or bad? You never know for sure, but one of the things you can do is ask yourself, I care about this, is anyone else gonna care about it? How do we teach teachers to be creative? How do we teach them to foster creativity within their students? In terms of what teachers can do to foster creativity, I think the most important thing is teaching kids that creativity is not just some kind of inborn ability mm -hmm. and that if you haven't shown it, therefore you don't have it, mm -hmm. but rather that it's something you can decide to do and that the way you decide to do it is by thinking for yourself. Mm -hmm.
because you never master creativity or grit. And what we're teaching them is to feel comfortable with mastery. Mm -hmm. So when it comes to things you'll never master, like being creative and being resilient in the face of obstacles, you know, persevering when things go wrong, mm -hmm. that's always going to be uncomfortable. And if you're teaching people, comfort comes with mastery. It's the wrong lesson to teach them. Then they'll only do things that are easy for them and that they feel they've mastered. Mm -hmm. And the risk is you become a hack. You keep just doing over and over again the things that are easy for you and that you know you do well.